Well, hey, I'm so glad you could stop by. Let's talk about this Walmart dirt jumper right behind me. This thing is a mongoose and you used to be able to pick them up at Walmart. They are discontinued by mongoose. You can no longer purchase them, but there is a cult following with them. So today I'm gonna to dive deep into this Walmart mongoose dirt jumper and let you know what I found out about it. It's cult following and if you should even look for one. I'll also talk about the good, bad, and ugly of this bike. So I'll start by showing you the bike up close and personal. Now, aside from the bike, what do you guys think, guys and girls, anybody out there watching, what do you think about this studio look? I really like the dramatic feel of this, and I would, I would love to replicate how this looks within my house, but, you know, I'm out in my shed and it's like grungy and dark, and I uh, changed up some settings on my camera, so if you notice those, then, you know, I, I appreciate you, but I think it looks really good. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. I'm gonna try to keep this at under two minutes, that way I could give you like eight minutes of information on, on the bike itself. But the reason why I you know, originally found this bike is because there was one selling in my area and it looked really enticing because I've never seen a dirt jumper on the used market sell for $100 unless it was like really junky or it was broken. And for these ones to show up for $100 and even cheaper in this particular uh, particular scenario um, was really cool. So I, I found a bike, the same exact bike in my area, but the guy sold it within like 20 minutes of posting it. So I was really bummed out. But then I was on a mission to find another one in the state of Florida. And only a few of them existed. Like there was a bunch in Miami, but people were asking like $300. And it's because there is a cult following with these bikes. So whether you believe it or not, or if you like it or not, there is a lot of people interested in this bike frame because it's a good steel frame for a dirt jumper or just a cruiser bike. I wouldn't jump this thing on really serious stuff, but you know, around the park and cruising, it's a pretty cool frame. But I found it in Miami. I had to pay the guy uh, via uh, virtual payment, and I had somebody, you know, hold on to it. It was a big ordeal, but luckily or unluckily, I broke a rib while I was waiting, or you know, awaiting pickup. So I broke a rib. I was out for like six weeks, and I'm still, you know, not 100%. But um, six weeks went by. I picked up the bike and. Now I'm good to ride and I'm going to start rehabbing and show you more about this thing. That's pretty much it. I found it on Facebook Marketplace for $60 and it's a really good deal if you find one in good condition. This one, probably not the best option because it's not in the best condition, but luckily for me I'm tinkering on it and trying to build it up to something that's worth riding. So if that's what you're looking for, then any sort of mongoose that comes up. This is called the DJ266, I believe. And if you could find that mongoose DJ266, then you're in for a good frame. And let's now get to the actual frame. I'll show you what it looks like. Let's talk history of the mongoose and the mongoose dirt jumper 682. To preface this, let's all agree that not all mongoose bikes are created equal and that it is unfair to blatantly call all mongoose bikes garbage. In 1975, Skip Hess develops new BMX technology and mongoose is born out of a garage in California. For nearly 20 years, from 1975 to 2000, mongoose was more or less a core BMX company. But they even built one of the most futuristic and best-selling full suspension mountain bikes of the time in 1992. 
but in 2000, they sold out to Pacific Cycles. There were some different transactions between companies before it actually reached Pacific Cycles, but that's for a different video. Pacific Cycles is actually the Walmart division of big names like Schwinn and Mongoose. During the period of the mid 2000s, their empire succumbs to criticism due to the low quality bikes being sold at Walmart. And unfortunately, the name Mongoose becomes blackballed, bringing us to today and this Mongoose 682. By the way, if you're interested in hearing more about the history of Mongoose or similar stories like this, I'm open to your comments and really like this style of storytelling, so please let me know your feedback and hopefully this series will continue on with more videos like it. Anyways, back to the Mongoose Dirt Jumper 682. In my opinion, Mongoose split as a company when Pacific Cycles began ownership. Walmart bikes, like the kind skills with Phil rips down a bike park in, and dedicated pro-level bikes, like the kind you see DJ Brandt launching at Red Bull Rampage. There is still a core team of designers and engineers at Mongoose, but they will likely remain in the shadows of Walmart sales meetings and quarterly return reviews. So where does the Mongoose 682 sit? Somewhere beside the Mongoose XR Pro, that was made famous by Kev Central. My theory is that ever so often, a good bike from Mongoose is sold at Walmart to drive interest and in revenue, but it's quickly discontinued after a period of two or so years. Why you ask? Well, here's conspiracy alert. Probably because over the long term, these bikes wouldn't generate enough money considering the halfway decent parts and labor as compared to the typical Walmart offering. But the DJ682 along with the XR Pro don't fit in anywhere in the Mongoose Pro line of bikes, so they slowly dissolve and live on through videos and forums and crazy people like me. So what is good about the Mongoose Dirt Jumper 682? It's a pretty decent steel frame and geometry. The only specifications I could find saying that this is a steel dirt jumper are from Walmart and Amazon. To go along with that, it has a good geometry that's pretty modern and future-proof, and it's also upgradable with the bottom bracket and fitting specifications. Most modern stuff will actually fit on this bike frame. The steel that this frame is made out of has no record or any information behind it, but I've seen people say that it's high tensile steel. This actually creates a lot of debate and anger between different persons and preferences, but in my opinion, it looks like it's gonna hold up great. The welds look fine. And there's a lot of evidence that people have been jumping these things. And actually there's also no evidence online anywhere that says these frames have broken. So that's a huge plus in my opinion. I happen to really like the styling of thin tubing and modern lines with this bike. And in all honesty, it looks strikingly similar to other steel dirt jump bikes currently sold like the NS Bikes Metropolis. If you could find one of these Mongoose dirt jumpers at the right price, there isn't much that should deter you if you're willing to tinker, but listen to the pitfalls next and determine for yourself. There are some negatives with this bike like inconsistency with production. This is more important when talking about the welds because if you're trying to ride this bike safely on advanced features, most of the parts are going to be replaced anyways, so the parts problem is not an issue in my opinion. The welds on my bike look strong and fluid, but you might want to check yours before committing to a full build or even buying one. It also only has rim brakes. Since I don't have a ton of practice with dirt jumps, I'm not sure how this will affect the bike in this scenario, but I know many riders who ride brakeless and if it becomes an issue, there are always ways of adding discs, but doing so would likely be outweighed by purchasing a better dirt jump frame anyways. The bottom bracket and crank set are going to need to be replaced whether you're riding this for fun around the neighborhood or if you're hitting big jumps. The bottom bracket is American. This was the first form of BMX bottom bracket and isn't the standard with modern bikes, unless money is being saved like a Walmart bike. Luckily there are ways to convert this to a European style or a standard threaded mountain bike bottom bracket which I haven't seen on any other versions of the Mongoose Dirt Jumper. I hope that helps you to understand a little bit more about the origins of this bike. Now let's talk about its cult following. With the existence of the internet 
nothing is unlearnable, and most information and forums don't disappear. That's where a forum called Big Box Bikes comes to play. The only real place I could find information on the Mongoose 682. That's where a majority of these photos came from and the reason the bike is so intriguing to me. If one of your photos is in this video, then comment down below and let me know. Thank you for sharing. If you do a Google search for the Mongoose Dirt Jumper, Big Box Bikes will be somewhere on the first page. I'll link the forum in the description below if you want to check it out further. From what I could tell, this bike gained traction in early 2013 and was released somewhere between 2012 and 2013, and it continued to gain traction up until 2018. From there, it kind of slowed down, but there is very detailed information and help on this bike within this forum, and it's a great asset if you find one of these rare bikes. Nearly 400 posts and 40 pages of photos, information, and user experience. Within those 40 pages, no one has claimed a broken frame, so again, that's a huge bonus for this bike. The one main pattern I did notice was that not many folks changed the bottom bracket or chainring. There were a few exceptions, but most of them kept with the three-piece crank set typical on a BMX. I, however, plan on using a Euro style adapter and putting mountain bike cranks on this bike since that is my preference. And I think it'll be cool because I trail ride a lot and I could share experience on how it works within this bike's platform. Wrapping this up, in my opinion, this bike doesn't lack much compared to the current competition within the price range. The closest bike is from bikesdirect.com and looks to be very similar spec and quality for $299. For a frame set or budget dirt jumper in today's market, you'll be spending $500 plus, but with that price, you'll be getting disc mounts in a modern bottom bracket slash headset. Personally, I like to challenge myself with the Mongoose and I'm excited to share the progress and performance of this bike with you and continue the legacy of the Mongoose Dirt Jumper 682. But yeah, the reason why I was tipped off to these bikes is because I saw a $100 Dirt Jumper on Facebook Marketplace that actually looked legit. So that's how I stumbled upon this and that's why I'm here telling you about it. But I think it's a cool platform and it's a really interesting bike in the, the history of Mongoose and especially Walmart bikes. So if you thought it was cool, nice little story and some cool information about a, you know, a bike that you might be able to pick up and upgrade as well, then just let me know. Um, comment down below with your thoughts and there goes a, a very loud car. I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to go out there and create your own adventure however you can. Spread some positivity. See you later. All right.